Today in John Wesley's Journal is a podcast produced by the Wesley Center at Chattanooga, the United Methodist Student Center. In this podcast, we will learn about early Methodism by following John Wesley through his journal as he and others begin a movement that would give rise to the Methodist Church in all its forms. So sit back and let's see what happened today in John Wesley's journal. Welcome back to Today in John Wesley's Journal for January 17th, 1736. But before we get to John Wesley's journal, let's look at some other things that happened on this day in church history. On this day in 1525, the City Council of Zurich, Switzerland, held a public debate on the issue of infant baptism in response to Anabaptist views on believer's baptism. In 1562, Protestant Huguenots are given permission to preach in France. The 18th Amendment took effect on this day in 1920, making prohibition the law of the land in the United States. The Methodist Episcopal Church played a large role, along with other groups, in pushing the amendment into law. Through its Board of Temperance and Public Morals, a precursor to the United Methodist Church's General Board of Church and Society, the Church lobbied for the outlaw of alcohol in the United States. It was a noble but dubious effort, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer mentions in his work on ethics and the Church. This day also marks the last day that Raoul Wallenberg was seen alive. A Swedish diplomat, his Lutheran faith led him to save Hungarian Jews from Nazi occupation. He was arrested by Soviet forces and never seen again in 1945. And yesterday, the 16th, in 1604, a Puritan by the name of John Reynold dropped an idea in the ear of King James for a new English translation of the Bible. And just like that, the King James Bible was born. Oddly enough, the Puritans themselves would tend to be Geneva Bible only folk. Anti-slavery reformer Henry Thornton died at the home of William Wilberforce on January 16, 1815. And now, John Wesley's journal for today, January 17, 1736. Many people were very impatient at the contrary wind. At seven in the evening, they were quieted by a storm. It rose higher and higher till nine. About nine, the sea broke over us from stem to stern, burst through the window of the state cabin, where three or four of us were, and covered us all over, though a bureau sheltered me from the main shock. About eleven, I lay down in the great cabin, and in a short time fell asleep, though very uncertain whether I should wake alive, and much ashamed of my unwillingness to die. Oh, how pure in heart must he be, who would rejoice to appear before God at a moment's warning. Toward morning, he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And now we return to our time, but we'll be back for another entry from John Wesley's journal on January 18th. Have a good day.